Minecraft has a new update, and it's in the nether. This has brought new blocks, biomes, ambience, and lighting, and it's very, very exciting. This is the first snapshot we've seen, and my goodness does it look amazing. And as with every update, I like to take the new blocks and experiment with them to see what's possible practically speaking, using them in our builds and in our redstone projects. Without further ado, let's get into it. So, let's take a look at what this update has to offer. So we're going to cycle quickly through all of the new blocks. You may have already seen these, but I will just give an opinion on each as we go through. So, starting off, the big news is these new log types, if you can really call them logs, they've got weird sounds associated with them and they've got an animation as well. They are a little bit on the creepy side and I absolutely love them. They're very niche, both of these. This is a brand new shade of purple as is this a brand new shade of blue being introduced and later on I will show you what can be done with these. And then we've got all the wood variants that go with it, the crimson door and the warped door. Now these both have a very very interesting technique Texture. specifically this one it's got all kinds of wibbly wobbly bits and then you've got all of the variations the trap doors your pressure plates your fence gates and these shades are pretty cool even though their use is going to be a little bit on the odd side we also have soul soil which is another brown block which will definitely come in useful and it doesn't make you slow which is amazing and then we have a very interesting block, the basalt. Now this is wonderful. Any grey block is going to do wonders for Minecraft builders. But it's got a cobbly-like texture on the top and then a smooth one on the side. So it does have a log-like appearance to it. But again, we'll come to some of the things you can do to that later. Then we have crimson nilium? 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 I'm not sure. And warped nilium. So you got your red and you got your blue. Now, these will be very useful in the nether, but um, outside of the nether, it's going to be a bit odd to use. Moving on, we've got a brand new set of plants. Crimson fungi, warped fungi, crimson roots, warped roots, nether sprouts, and weeping vines. So, again, lots of interesting, but kind of alien-like creatures. All of these colour sets are a little bit different to what we're used to. We also have the shroom light, which makes a wicked sound. <laughs> We've got the warped wart block, which is a mouthful to say, which is just like the nether wart block, but in blue. We have my favourite, the block of netherite. My goodness, what an amazing looking block. We've needed something like this for such a long time, but it's so expensive. It's so difficult to find these, which is the ancient debris, which you use to make netherite. And yeah... Using it in building is probably not going to happen unless you're in creative mode. And then finally, we've got uh, the soul fire lantern and the soul fire torch, which are just the variants of your normal lantern, but they give off slightly less light. And a slight change to the way walls work. They now link up without having a gap in the middle, which has various uses as we will go on to later. So these are all the new things. Hopefully I didn't linger too long on those. Let's get into all of the ideas that I have to show you. The first one being a room design based on the new blocks. So this stripped crimson stem actually works quite well as a wallpaper. It's a deep purple, which makes it not seem too bright in here. And we've used the shroom light as the light up here. And we've used it on top of a dragon egg for a really cool lamp design. And then additionally, we've got soul soil here as a little carpet, which because of the pattern, I think looks pretty cool. But we've got a lot to get through, so let's keep moving. I actually think these nether sprouts, I don't know if these will actually be able to be placed on grass in the future because these are a nether plant of some kind, so things may change. We are only in a snapshot, so who knows. And also the sulfire lantern works really well as light, so the nether sprouts basically work really nicely on the grass blocks, just as a different shade of green. And then moving on, we've got some trickery that we can do with the new wall fix that they made. So as I said earlier, you lose the gaps, meaning you can place wall blocks to create 
actually a nice looking wall. However, you can detail it slightly. You'll notice that there are some pillars etched into this just as a very small 3D detail. And I do this by adding some blocks at the back here. So if I removed these, it would all go flat and you'd have it flat all the way along the wall. So by adding them at the back here, you give that pillar effect without any of the gaps and it gives you a really nice way to detail these things. Moving on, we are using the netherite for the first time. This is just a really cool pedestal using the anvil and then of course I like to display the dragon egg because I think it's a really unique block. And you could use this as pillars or entrances to anything, the netherite block is going to come in very handy. As with any of the log types, you can create pillars, but these in particular look really cool. I must say the shades and the hue on these two colours are absolutely spot on for giving the effect that they are intended to. So by adding the doors and the trap doors, you can surround a single block pillar to make it look really detailed. Moving on, we have netherite again, paired with an anvil to give you a really solid wrought iron looking fence. Now, the problem is that we have iron blocks, but it's not really the color of actual iron. It's actually more the color of steel, stainless steel. But this netherite actually looks like proper iron. And I imagine that we will see this combination done many, many times. The new walls can be mixed together and no gaps will occur. So you can create some really nice animal pens in here using this little trick here. Moving on. Now, okay, wait, you, you might have seen this, but this is a little bit weird. <laughs> The nether vines or the weeping vines are really strange and so are most of the blocks that have been added. So I just wanted to show you that just take it or leave it. You can create some pretty weird stuff. I mean, I used the shroom light block as eyes and I must admit it looks like they're bloodshot. And then I used the crimson nilium or nilium, whatever you want to call it. My goodness, does this look terrifying. And I won't be surprised that we'll see some creepy things out there in the nether just because of these weird shades. And also, I, I, the crimson roots as hair. I, I, just, I just wanted to put this out there that things can get pretty weird with these color schemes. Now, the next one that I want to show you is actually a redstone trick that I thought I had discovered. Well, actually, I did discover it, but people have already beaten to me displaying it on YouTube. So, this is using the cobblestone wall trick. So you create three wide and you can go as high as you like because when you put a block at the top here, it instantly creates a channel change that can be detected by an observer at the bottom, which basically means that you can make a redstone signal travel downwards in one tick like so. You see that? It detects it and sends a signal down. The observer gives you the redstone signal. It, this is going to be very useful as it's extremely cheap to do. All right, let's not hang around. We've got a lot to get through. This is a new way to make pathways. Obviously, we've got some warped fence with the, the soul fire lantern. The color of these is just fantastic. But the top of the basalt makes for a really good cobble path and even the sound. It really sounds like you're walking on a pathway and I absolutely love it. The alternative, of course, being actual cobblestone, but it doesn't quite have the same effect just because, again, it's very, very light grey. So with the new wooden blocks, we've got the warped and the crimson, we can actually do all of the things that we do with other wood types just in this particular colour. So I thought I'd include the uh, the bed here, the table chairs, that kind of thing. But you can even make bigger beds and stuff using these colours. It just opens up a whole different range of things to make. What you have to remember is that before you were limited to quite subdued tones. You could have white, brown, birch, jungle. There was no red, there's no blue. There's no yellow. You ha you are very limited on what you could use. And this has really opened up some doors. Now, using the basalt, again, you can create some really nice floor patterns here. It goes really well with the smithing table or just with itself and the netherite. Again, I know how expensive this block is, but if you're in creative mode, this is a really nice pattern. They go well together. This is sideways basalt, and then this is the top, and it all really melds together. I've got to say I really like most of the textures in this update. 
Now, how do we put this all together in one big go? Well, look at this. This is sort of a mansion themed fireplace and it's got that kind of creepy essence to it. So by mixing in the warped planks with some of the warped stems and even a layer of warped doors because it gives you this really nice pattern, you can put in a dark fireplace and the blue flames which will ignite on top of soul sand or soul soil and my goodness do you get a really really nice effect and of course in this update you also have netherite armor so if, just to add to this creepy mansion theme you can even have a darker shade of armor this works really really well together the color scheme matches the, the wooden floor the blue and the dark, it just is absolutely wonderful. I love this. Moving on, a block that we haven't talked much about at all, which is the Ancient Debris. Now this is the really rare block that you need in order to get netherite. However, the texture of it is pretty interesting. It's actually a little odd. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty unique. So what we've got here is a palm tree, which you can use the Ancient Debris to make. This is probably the most expensive palm tree you will ever see in Minecraft. But it is possible. If you're making something in creative mode, maybe you'd consider this because it is an alternative to the rather light composter block, which looks like this. So it's just another alternative. And then you can make some really weird and wonderful things using the plant. So we've got something that looks a little bit like a light and we've got a cage or a, a test tube full of the weeping vines and the red flowers and stuff in there, the mushrooms, really odd stuff. But you're probably wondering, how do we put this sort of thing together? How do we incorporate the crimson stems and the, the weird warped trap doors? Like, these are some odd color choices. Like, you know, we've shown an example here for a fireplace, but how do we mix the purple and the blue all together? Well, in this mysterious room here, we have done that. To give you an example of a basement which may or may not belong to a witch or a warlock. So down we go into the basement, and here we are. The colour scheme works really, really well together. We've got purple in the ceiling using the trap doors. We've got the use of the basalt, which is one of my new favourite blocks, I must admit. And then mixing in some of dark prismarine, which goes really well with the warped. And then a fireplace made out of the warped stems all lit up of course with soul fire lanterns and creating some sort of warlocky style storage somewhere for you to do your brewery and getting your ender chest we've also got an enchanting table which does actually look a little bit out of place i must admit maybe it would be worth considering you know just maybe making this feel more in line with all of the vibes going on here and underneath this bit of carpet, we've actually got lots of ender chests because it gives you this really nice purpley uh, particle effect to make the enchanting table seem even more magical. All of these things put together make for a really awesome dungeony style room and it actually feels so alive because of all of these particles, because of the brewery, because of this animated texture on the weird vine things, it's and the fire of course, it all looks absolutely brilliant and of course you can put this with a nether portal to actually go to the nether and you get all that nice particle effect. But that's not all, there is way more that we can do with these blocks. We have another bed design, which admittedly is creepy, but the weeping vines actually looks a little bit like a curtain, which we haven't had previously, except for banners, which actually leaves a bit too much of a gap. So we've got a nice looking bed in here. Now, in ice related projects, you can use this blue fire because it won't melt any of the snow or the ice, or at least in this snapshot. So consider using this particular flame because it works really well with all ice and snow related builds. Really, really cool. We were previously unable to light up these areas and my goodness does that synergize so well. Moving on, the basalt and indeed the shroom light work well in conjunction with other things. So the lava here, instead of ha actually having it flow around, the shroom light looks like it's kind of magma -y. I know we've got magma blocks, but these actually, they work slightly better in my opinion. They look a lot hotter than the magma blocks and you can mix and match all of these together to synergize. 
and the basalt, as I said earlier, looks a lot like logs. So you could have a burnt forest using these. It looks like these have been charred to absolute smithereens. So you could even have part of the log still here, but then have some of it charred over the top. They don't really uh, connect quite well, but you could have some ashes in here. It all works well. Now building on this, you can have a partially burnt house. Instead of actually having a flame here, you could increase the amount of basalt into the build like this, and it looks like it's burnt away, literally burnt away, and now it's all ash colored absolutely works i think in my opinion this this works really really well so moving on again building on the same premise that basalt looks like charred wood if you build yourself a furnace and you're brave enough to use blocks of netherite for this um then you can use the basalt as a sort of burnt background to it so you can see i've kind of made this look like the outside of the flame has slowly charred away at the stripped dark oak log there now, the next one is a ghost ship made out of warped planks. This exact shade makes it absolutely perfect for a ghost ship, including the soul fire lanterns. Just everything about this screams like the river sticks. Everything about this screams the river sticks. It's just absolutely awesome. Now, I need to give some credit to Ghost Aboki, who posted a similar boat on Reddit, and I thought it was absolutely an awesome idea, and he's so right. This works brilliantly as a ghost ship. Now, I've obviously only made half. This is the sort of thing that looks a bit odd here when I'm showcasing it, but in the nether where it would be built, now that would be awesome. The only thing I don't know is, does this set fire? I can't actually set fire to this particular plank. Does it spread? Can you put this in lava? Will it Will it die? Or will it just burn forevermore? It seems, yeah, it seems safe. Okay, so you could actually make a ghost ship in the lava in nether. I'm definitely doing that for season seven of Hermitcraft. It's just, it's got to be done. Moving on, using the warped and the crimson stems, which are a very odd block animated, you can use these as, a, I guess, liquid or fluid. It just, it looks so alive and so animated that in a weird laboratory scene, it genuinely looks like there's some sort of thing flowing through these tubes and you can imagine that this would work really well in some crazy laboratory. Moving on, you can create some pretty cool light fixtures with the warped stairs, etc. With the blue light, I can't get over it, it's just so cool. And finally, we have some bigger examples to show you of how you could use this in a bigger build setting how you would put this together so the red the warped and the crimson it all works really well together now if you wanted to do something a little bit more fancy you can actually make these lanterns float by using set block and making it seem like they are all around kind of like hogwarts style in a great hall it would work really well and my goodness does this look impressive However, this doesn't synergize with everything, so if you're going to commit to using this block, you really need to think about what you're going to synergize this with. And another example is use in a roof. Now, people often use prismarine or dark prismarine in particular for their roofs on their houses, but it synergizes well with the warped slabs. So here's a good example of a house that is made out of those blocks, and it works particularly well in a swamp at night. So these are all of the 1.16 Minecraft tricks and tips that I have to show you, although I will be working on more in the future. There's a lot here, and I'm sure there's a lot more that can be done. So I want to say a big thank you to Pleasant Moon, Tenku, and Benjamin who helped me put these together. However, I do have one more thing to show you though, made by my good friend Pearlescent Moon. She has made a mansion out of the new blocks and it's so good and so inspirational that I need to showcase it. So I'm just going to go quickly through all of them, that one being one of my favourites, all the little details and tricks and tips that you can use for your new nether build. However, what we're going to do is we're going to pop into the nether itself because this is best viewed with all of the animations and the atmosphere so thank you pearl for showing me this let's go and take a look and let's take a look so this is the mansion that palescent moon made and my goodness does it look awesome i mean this shape would work in a load of different colors but 
just the mixture of the wart, then the, these are all nether related blocks. These are really, really cool. And what's she done here? She's got purple stained glass panes with some of the shroom lights behind it. And then the, then she's put a crimson trap door there as well. So overall, you can make a genuine nether house, which you really couldn't do well before. You were limited to the red nether brick and the normal nether brick, but now you've actually got something to contrast. And I've got to say, it's the mixture of the crimson with the purple terracotta and the crimson stem. All of this works really well. So massive thank you to Pleasant Moon for letting me show you guys this inspiration. And I will leave a link in the description to her channel below. She is making one build every day for an entire year. And I think she could use all the support we can give her. So thank you very much. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you got some inspiration from this video. And I'm sure there will be many, many more. So thank you very much for watching. And good bye. <laughs> the, 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 time, the timing of that was brilliant. <laughs> bye.